Hi, I'm Keith Ghostland. I'm Ann Charles. And I'm Linda Quinlan. And <clears throat> welcome to All Things LGBTQ. It is Tuesday, July 25th. And we are taping at Orca Media in Maupilia, which we acknowledge is unceded indigenous land. So, the trivia. Hmm. July is Mental Health Awareness Month. And as we were talking before we started taping, we know that homosexuality was removed as a psychiatric disorder in 1973. What about transgender? Stay tuned. I have a question about that. Was it ever on the list of? Hold on to that okay. thought. All right. Because it may not have, that may not have been how it was defined, but what was the meaning? Okay. Okay. Now, go ahead. We're feeling chatty today. Oh, we're, we're, we're in trouble. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with Rainbow Umbrella. You still have the book discussion group. And the book you are reading is? Enthrall by Jane Dillon. All right. Women's discussion group. September oh. 13th is when the we're going to reconvene. All right, because I was going to ask if there was an update on track. Okay, so unfortunately, words in the woods. When one of our favorite wicked women was going to read their poetry, it had to be delayed be because of flooding. Flooding. I knew you didn't want to be in the woods alone, but I didn't realize the extent to which you would. So that <laughs> is going to do that exactly. <laughs> yeah. But that is being rescheduled. Yes, it that is, is so correct. We'll let everybody know if that happens. And I also noticed that the Humanities Council filmed you reading some of your poetry, and that's going to be available on their website. Correct. Okay, but you are also involved in a project called Poetry Prefer. For perseverance. Yes. And unfortunately, the last live reading is going to be before this show tapes. But this was a fundraiser for Another Way and Rainbow Bridge Correct. Community Center. Correct. And but, Robin Joy was really the person who got this going. I'm I'm reading. Okay. But she was basically the person who the driving force. Yeah, the driving force for this. So, and I will give Zach the poster they can put up because I believe there's a contact where people could still make a donation right. to those. And I'm going to say that, you know, we all are, have been seeing the incredible outpouring oh. in, you know, 1,800 people one day showing up to volunteer in downtown. But Barry has had a slightly different experience, but... Rainbow Bridge Community Center, they stepped up. Mm -hmm. They looked at what was being done that was needed, and they took the lead in coordinating volunteers. Yep. How do we get volunteers? How do we use them effectively? What is the real need? Good going, Sean. Yep. I'm, I'm and I have to say, I drove through Barry. Ann and I drove through Barry. Everything was off the street. And here it was still piled high, so I don't know. But. Well, I, I think it was impacted in Barry in different places, and we just may not be really seeing yeah. the because it was out in the residential districts versus the middle of downtown. Right. So, and I'm, you know, the attorney general is already putting out. Please be careful of scams. We all want to help. If we cannot physically do things, we want to give a financial donation. Please be sure that you know where your donation is going. A lot of scams going on. There's an there. authentic site. And if somebody says they're from FEMA, make them show you your ID. And going along the lines of recovery and how we can be helpful, I want to put out there again that the Samara Foundation, until August 31st, they, they had already done this. They want to grant projects and organizations from within the LGBTQ plus communities. Right. If you have a project that you've always wanted to do, but funding was an issue, August 31st, and if you go on to the Vermont Community Foundation site, you get a direct link into the grant application itself. And, and with that- I want I, to do that. I, I, yeah, I'm afraid of what you're gonna come I up know. with. Well. Time for me? Absolutely. All right. 
Um, I have many headlines. Uh, the first involves the world, <laughs> involving world cycling. Once again, banning transgender women from female cycling events. Um, this occurred in Switzerland. Female transgender athletes who transitioned after male puberty will no longer be able to compete in women's races, world cycling governing body said Friday. Uh, the International Null Cycling Union uh, joined the governing bodies in track and field and swimming as top tier Olympic sports addressing in this way, the issue of transgender athletes and fairness in women's events. Um, a, an American writer, Austin Phillips, became the first openly transgender woman to win an official cycling event in May. A backlash occurred. So from now on, female transgender athletes who transitioned after male puberty will be prohibited from participating in female sports in all categories in various disciplines. Uh, the ban starting on Monday was necessary, they said, to ensure equal opportunities. Um, Phillips is 27 years old, and she adhered to the policy put in place by the UCI, the International Cycling Union, last year, according to tr which transgender athletes have, need to have a special testosterone level and so forth. Despite the ban, the UCI would like to reaffirm that cycling as a com is a competitive sport, leisure activity, and, or means of transport, and is open to everyone. Uh, the, its men's category will be renamed Men Open at the International Masters events, which are below the elite level for riders aged at least 30, adding that any athlete who does not meet the conditions for participation in women's events will be admitted without restriction. So this, is, this follows the British cycling um, policy in approving um, that they approved in May that include plans to split competitive races to open and female categories. The female category has to stay with cisgender women uh, and transgender men yet to, to begin hormone therapy. The decision closed another competitive route to the Paris 2024 Olympics for transgender hmm. athletes. So. There you go. Um, I'd like to continue. Where are we going now? We're going to go to Jamaica. Uh, not, I have a bad feeling. I know, not known <laughs> for its warm and fuzzy attitude toward LGBTQ folks. The U.S. State Department is unhappy with their refusal to accredit the spouse of a gay diplomat. Mm. And, you know, it's normal, normal procedure. A diplomat is sent to a country, and the spouse gets all, you know, the benefits um, but Jamaica, the under, um, the subtle message here, Jamaica doesn't want to do it. And so what they've asked is to keep the three, three diplomats that they already have who have served for five years, so it's time for them to go. So they've granted or they've <laughs> requested an extension because they don't want to give benefits to the same-sex spouse of the diplomat mm. who has been appointed. So the U.S. is unhappy with that, and we'll see how it plays out. I uh, am suspicious of, of it all. Um, more bad news from uh, Africa. Ghana High Court tosses challenge to draconian anti-gay bill. The Supreme Court of Ghana unanimously tossed an application to haunt further progress on the country's anti-LGBTQ legislation currently under negotiation in the parliament. It would ban most LGBTQ activities, relationships, and advocacy, including marriage equality and gender-affirming care for trans people. Vice President Kamala Harris expressed her opposition to the legislation when she visited the country in March, and we talked about that visit uh -huh. and hoped that she would advocate for us. Under the bill, which was first introduced in 2021, Advocates of the LGBTQ community would face up to a decade in prison. Public displays of same-sex affection or cross-dressing could lead to a fine or jail time, and certain um, types of medical support would be made illegal. 
The legislation would make it illegal for news outlets to distribute LGBTQ affirming content, require citizens to report suspected LGBTQ plus neighbors, force intersex people into surgery, and LGBTQ plus people into conversion therapy and ban marriage equality for folks who have had gender confirmation surgery. And you know how that works, right? You're mad at your neighbor for something? Mm -hmm. You turn them in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, are we sure this isn't Tennessee or Florida? Is no you, Uganda? Yeah. Or Hungary. No. <coughs> we'll move on to Hungary. Oh, I'm afraid. <laughs> but oh. let's, well, let's first go to Asia, where I have some good news. Um, and I have a picture now of a Japanese activist um, who is celebrating the Supreme Court's uh, issuing of a landmark trans rights ruling. So, Japan Supreme Court Tuesday ruled the government cannot restrict a transgender woman uh, employee from using the women's restroom in her government job. Very good. Yeah. Um, this person started the job and worked um, at it and then transitioned. And then when the person transitioned, um, they were sent to another department, and the um, other employees complained and said they didn't want to use the same restroom. So uh, the transgender person had to go up or down two flights of stairs to use the restroom. So um, the Supreme Court said, this is discrimination. All people should have the right to live their lives in society based on their own sexual identities. Um, this actually, the plaintiff's lawyer said that the significance of that should not be reduced to the use of toilets and public baths. Um, the pilot in this case, I'm sorry, the plaintiff was diagnosed with gender dysphoria in 1999 uh, before they got a job at Japan's Ministry of Economy. Uh, one year after she started presenting at a woman, as a woman, she was transferred to a different post. Um, she hasn't undergone gender-affirming surgery, a prerequisite for officially changing one's gender in the country for medical reasons. Um, the ministry in the first, uh, when she was transferred to this new job, I just told you all that, the plaintiff was forced to go two floors up or down. The employee asked the government to remove the restriction in 2013. This is the kind of runaround she's yeah. been getting, but was rejected out of concern for the potential discomfort of fellow employees. She filed suit in 2015, and the Tokyo District Court ruled in her favor in 2019, but that decision was overturned by the <laughs> Tokyo High Court in 2021. So today's ruling from the Supreme Court reverses that decision. <laughs> At some point, the two of you are going to have to explain to me what happens in a women's designated bathroom that raises this kind of that concern. It's I it's know. Like, what, what are you all doing in there? I, damn. Well, I'll tell you what's going on in Indonesia. Gossip. Uh oh. Gossip. Mm -hmm. um, after security threats, Indo Indonesia has scrapped an LGBTQ event, and it was a big deal, uh, but it was the Southeast Asian. LGBTQ event, um, and we need to recall at this point that homosexuality is a taboo subject in Indonesia, the world's most populous Muslim-majority nation, even though it's not illegal, except in the Sharia-ruled Aceh province, which I remember reporting on a cane yeah. in there. Other LGBTQ relates related events have also been canceled in Indonesia due to objections from Islamic groups. In December, the United States called off a visit by its LGBT special envoy after an influential clerical body denounced the visit. Jakarta was set to host the ASEAN Queer Advocacy Week from July 17th, bringing together activists from across Southeast Asia to discuss advocacy and navigating challenges. Uh, it was jointly organized by a Philippines-based right uh, caucus, an Indonesia-based group, and other activists. But the Philippine caucus said they have now moved the event outside of Indonesia to ensure the safety and security of both the participants and the organizers. Um, they decided to relocate the venue of the program 
outside Indonesia after they got a lot of threats. Um, it also cited a wave of anti-LGBTQ sentiments on social media. The organizers didn't say where it's going to be now because they're afraid of security reasons. For, of security. But they're still going to have them? Yeah, the, but the event has also drawn attention as Indonesia hosts a regional uh, meeting of the Southeast Asian foreign Co ministers this week, raising questions from some anti-LGBT groups on whether the event was linked to the, so this uh, festival that was canceled. Indonesia's foreign ministry said the event had nothing to do with the regional bloc. The LGBT event was condemned online and by Islamic groups. Now. No, we have to move on now. Oh, Linda. Yeah, sorry. I have got a huge story. Well, pending. you'll have to wait I, I, the I next can time. see it. Yeah, <laughs> it's two you'll have to articles wait. and a clip. Well, you'll have to wait till the next time around. All right. <laughs> you should hope I'm brief. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jonathan D. Lewis, and I have a picture of him, an activist and philanthropist for LGBTQ clauses, causes died July 5th at his home in Florida after a long battle with lymphoma. Mm. He was 64. Lewis served on the board of the American Foundation of Equal Rights, which brought together attorneys Ted Olson and David Boyes to fight California's Prop 8, a voter-approved constitutional amendment that revoked marriage equality in the state. Prop 8 ended up being struck down in federal court, a decision affirmed by the U.S. Supreme Court in 2013. Mm. So, and an Idaho family with transgender children are seeking to stop the state's ban on gender affirming care for trans minors, which threatens health care providers with felony charges and prison from going into effect. The families <clears throat> had already sued to challenge the ban, but Friday they uh, filed a motion asking a federal court to issue a preliminary injunction to keep it from going into effect while the case is being heard. How do you think that'll go? Mm. Idaho, yeah. <laughs> yeah. While many are questioning sexual identity of Ken in the new Barbie <laughs> movie, there's one study, a studly disco era male doll whose sexual identity has never been in doubt. Before Robin... Ryan Gosling brought famed male Ken doll to life on the symbol screen opposite Margot Robbie in the new Barbie film, which opened today. There was a very gay male doll named Gay Bob. <laughs> the Gay Bob doll came out of the closet in 1977, much to the displeasure of the right-wing culture warriors of the time. Not just because Bob was out and proud, but also he came with a penis. The National History Museum detailed the history of Gay Bob and his girthy plastic male dollhood in a blog post. And an, occasion, and an actual Gay Bob doll is featured in the Gay is Good collection at the Museum of the City of New York. Well, well, well. I, I, I actually remember it yeah. because it was one of the first commercially produced dolls that were anatomically, lot, anatomically correct <laughs> yeah. or complete. Listen, yeah. Are you going to see the movie? Uh, I hope We'll to. talk at dinner. Yeah. Uh -huh. Far-right media personality Stephen Crowder, who has falsely accused teachers of grooming children, yeah. has been accused of sexual misconduct in the um, uh, uh, workplace, and some of his employees say he is an actual groomer. So, mm. and you know, uh, according to text messages reviewed in this by the outlet, Crowder sent photos of his genitals to co workers. He would also allegedly expose his genitals to employees in person so frequently that most of them either laughed uncomfortably or showed outright disgust as a way to give him the attention he sought to as a way to get him to stop. Oh. Mm. That's creepy. I wonder if he shared them with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah. <laughs> mm. She was showing pictures. Just yeah, now, I, know. I know. 
Employees at the gay hookup app Grinder announced Thursday that they had launched a union. They also did so in part, they say, due to the company's CEO, George Arison's prior backing of anti-LGBTQ politicians. In a press release through the Labor Union Communication Workshops of America, the employees said that a super majority of workers at the company had announced the creation of Grinder United with CWA. Approximately 100 eligible members of the union signed representation cards at Grinder. So that's good news for them, don't you think? Yes. Unions are usually good. <clears throat> the leading organizers of Montana's largest LGBTQ plus pride parade in H Helena have joined a lawsuit challenging the state's drag performance ban. And some right-wingers are losing it over the new inclusive Barbie movie. We're back to Barbie. <laughs> back to Barbie. She just can't let go of it. Criticizing <laughs> its expansive view of gender and even calling it communist propaganda. <laughs> well, it is pink. <laughs> the Greta Gerwig directed film, which opens Friday, depicts a land in which various Barbies and Kens have an idyllic life. But one of them, played by Margot Robbie, decides to see what the outside world is like, and she's in for some surprises. Another one of Barbies is played by transgender actress Harry Neff. Um, and there's also, somewhere in here, pictures of Ted Cruz Barbie. I, I'm not going there. And I have a picture of Ted Cruz Barbie. That can't be pretty. So, You're going to show it to us? Yes, it's good. I have a picture right there of Ted Cruz Barbie. So this is another kind of disturbing story, but Rainbow Pride flights might soon be banned at Stonewall National Monument by Republicans in the House of Representatives as... They continue their cut to target LGBTQ funding during an appropriations process. Mm -hmm. Republicans had earlier proposed additional cuts to LGBTQ programs and services in Massachusetts and Pennsylvania, which you talked about. But um, now they are trying to um, put a rider that would prevent the pride flag from being flown at U.S. National Park Service sites like the Stonewall National Museum. Yeah that sits near the Stonewall Inn, where, in nine, where the 1969 riots began. So. I have faith in the New York yeah. representatives. They won't put up with it. No, I hope not. In what lawmakers have called an unprecedented move, House Republicans introduced and moved a last-minute amendment stripping three community projects of funding, which you talked about. No, I will be talking about. Oh, okay. So I will leave that to you. All right. That was Massachusetts. Right. Okay. In response to public condemnation for his anti-LGBT Facebook status, a North Carolina school board member has defended his actions on religious and constitutional grounds. Randy Moore said he loves people in the LGBT community as a Christian. In response to the Mount Airy Board of Education's decision last week to censor him, censure him. Though he did have one caveat, but not their doings, more stated, referring to homosexual behavior. While he claimed he was supported by the Bible, according to him, his Facebook posting either this month expressing his love for members of the LGBT community despite their doings was not personal. No. Oh. <laughs> and then for my last story for this segment, I'm going to tell you about, sadly, a uh, transgender man who uses, who uses a motorized wheelchair said a laughing assailant in a car shot him multiple times while a pellet, with a pellet gun and also yelled anti-LGBTQ slurs before driving away. Jonathan Blake Newton revealed the details of the incident 
including shocking photos of his injuries and the treatment he received at the local hospital in multiple posts on Facebook. Blake Newton said he was heading to the store in his motorized wheelchair on Saturday after his food stamp account had loaded. Less than two blocks from his home, an unknown assailant in a small beige four-door car opened fire on him, hitting his legs, arms, and side. He said the assailant laughed and shouted, Tranny faggot, as they drove off, leaving him injured and bleeding from multiple wounds. So. That's horrible. Yeah. And continue on the horrible theme, our city of Montpelier, in the middle of floods, people are reporting that they had their pride flags, Black Lives Matter posters stolen. Mm. Ah. And there was one account where the person said, I could see them out the window. I thought it was some a friend coming to help me. And they tore down my flag. Oh. And sort of following up with that, there was a report that Did was. Did they have like surveillance cameras there? Well, no, it was a private home. Oh, it was a private home. You know, is, do you have a surveillance camera in your apartment? I'd M like to. Maybe, but I would who, like to. who knows? In sort of following up on that, there was a report recently put out by GLAD, not the attorneys in Boston, but the national group that looks at how we are represented in the media. They and the Anti-Defamation League issued a statement that during this year's Pride season, the incidence of anti-LGBTQ plus activity more than tripled, and that the majority a 67% increase were incidents that were classified as harassment. And, you know, taking the flag down, that's vandalism. But I was thinking of Toussaint and the poetry reading in Lindenville. That would have been considered harassment. But if we don't report them, and I understand that the police are busy responding to flood relating and helping with cleanup, whatever. If it's not reported, it doesn't get counted, and it's as though it never occurred. Mm -hmm. So even if it's just, I want to let you know this happened, that gets logged, and then it goes into the national database, and there's a record of the level of violence that's occurring. But on a positive note. Oh, good. Yeah, I know. It's like, there's got, <laughs> I think we have to go through and make sure we have at least one positive story yes, per segment. At least one. Vermont Human Rights Commission. Uh huh. They've appointed a new executive director. And it is, and I am and being very straightforward. Big Hartman, who is one of their staff attorneys. <laughs> Big is the first openly queer, non-binary person to be the commission's executive director. And their board chair, which is Coach Christie, who we really like, said, you know, this is someone who understands from a day-to-day -day perspective the plight of our protected classes. And prior to being an attorney, staff attorney at the Human Rights Commission, they were a student at the Vermont Law School, so they really know Vermont. They worked for a private law firm in Stowe, and then they worked for the Vermont State Employees Association. <laughs> and this was the statement from Big Hartman. I have certainly always felt that there were big injustices in the world that needed to be addressed. I knew it from a very young age, and it's a driving force of everything I do in my life. Their priority as the new director is revamping the agency's website, thank you, as well as offering training opportunities to prevent discrimination in areas such as fair housing laws, unconscious bias, and workplace harassment. Welcome and good luck. Yes. So what you were referring to, Linda, Massachusetts, they have their House Committee on Transportation, Housing, and Urban Development. And it is apparently Republican-dominated. 
Mm. Uh, they pulled out the funding for the LGBTQ plus projects, even though they met the criteria for funding. And one of the congresswomen, Aya Presley, said, wait a minute, this isn't right. And one of the projects that was being stripped of funding was the $2 million for the Pride, which we've reported I on, know. which is the seniors housing project. I want to move in. And this money would be essential and critical for converting the, um, the school building into the apartments right. for our elders. So, you know. How did and, they get to, in Massachusetts, get to run a committee? I wonder. Well, is there any recourse? Um, well, it has to be voted out of committee, and then it would go to the floor, and the floor could put the monies back in. Good. Oh, good. So oh, it's, happens. but it's not going to be an easy process. And to depress you even further, yeah. New Hampshire did a study. It was the University of New Hampshire, and there were people from UVM that participated in this in connection with the Williams Institute, UCLA, did a study of food insecurity or insufficiently with LGBTQ plus residents and particularly elders and guess what? 29% of us face food insecurity. 28% of us have an annual income below $24,000. During the average week, 13% of us did not have enough food to eat. And what they were saying is, as part of the result of their study, is because LGBTQ identification has been removed from a lot of the federal reporting, we don't show up. So nobody knows. And unless somebody is taking the initiative to go out and ask, we're invisible. And, and of, you know, <coughs> part of their conclusion was, you know, one in five transgender New Englanders experience food insecurity every week. Wow. Which, I mean, it just... Blows your stop, mind. It stopped me, and I had to go back and read it saying, am I reading this correctly? And uh, remember during COVID, we had conversations about we're not showing up in any of the COVID statistics because the federal reporting had removed us as a reporting right. category. So, it, lastly, 303 Creative, because we haven't talked about it, the U.S. Supreme Court decision. Talking with the people at GLAD, because there was some, okay, what do we need to do strategically and what sort of legislative things do we need to put in place? As much as we immediately sort of held our breath saying, oh my God, what just happened to us, the Supreme Court gave them the right to, to discriminate against us. Glad said it's not that sort of cut and dry, that the ruling is incredibly narrow because the 303 creative, the woman who brought the suit, they created it, they basically fabricated it. But it was based on freedom of expression what she said, as opposed to the Masterpiece Cake, where you could go onto a website and say, oh, I want this cake, that cake, whatever, her business would involve her meeting individually with you and then her creating <coughs> something that represented you and your relationship so that it is her creative expression that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. And that's what they ruled on. It, so that, you know, like, and again, the Masterpiece Cake was the example they used. It isn't that he, you're going in and he's creating something totally unique for, for you. He has a business open to the public. You walk in and you pick from. It's not individually class created for you using their expression. Got it. You, no, okay, you were going to so say. How does, um, 
I don't know if you're going to report on this, Linda, but there's a salon in Colorado that's refusing to um, take LGBTQ customers, saying it's her First Amendment right. Well, my guess is that there will be more challenges. Oh, People yeah. will say, oh, this allows me to. Exactly. And then it's going to have to go up through those individual court systems. You know, Colorado, their Office of Attorney General or Human Rights, whatever is the regulatory, will have to look at, okay, what are the merits? Do you meet the standard and make a decision? So we will definitely need to continue watching that. My guess is that anybody who's involved in a business, you know, I could think a chef, I'm creating a meal for you, sure. but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of suits. But what Glad was saying was that how our Supreme Court, how the Supreme Court had ruled was much narrower than what people were trying to espouse. Well, let's hope that there's follow through with that. Um, I have a big hoo-ha from Asia. And um, <laughs> is this the clip? It involves a clip, but I also have a clip from Europe. Um, so the um, incident occurred when Maddie Healy, who is from the lead singer of this group 1975, yep. which got its name from marginalia, he wrote, in Jack Kerouac's On the Road, 1 June 1975. <laughs> so he goes to Malaysia with 1975, his band, and in, at the beginning of the second set, he slammed Malaysia's anti-LGBTQ laws, kisses the 1975 bassist on stage in Kuala Lumpur, stop telling us who we can have sex with. Um, and let me show you a clip that represents a variety of perspectives about this incident. A kiss that went global and a tirade that shut down an entire music festival. You're not representative of your government. Because you are young people, and I'm sure a lot of you are gay. The speech from the 1975's frontman, Matty Healy in Kuala Lumpur, criticised Malaysia's anti-LGBTQ plus laws. Ridiculous to tell people what they can do with that and that. That and the kiss between the lead singer and bassist Ross MacDonald led to Malaysian authorities banning the band, describing their actions as disrespectful. Are people worried that they are becoming more of a target then? Yeah, because of yeah, yeah. It was meant as a stand for the LGBTQ plus community in Malaysia where homosexuality is a crime, so they weren't consulted. It seems a bit, um, you know, not honest performative activism that may actually impact it um, negatively towards, our, towards um, the community here. It's increasing the pressure and also scrutiny towards the community itself. This also may possibly uh, push whatever work that we have done before this uh, back. Peter Tatchell protested in Qatar where homosexuality is also illegal. He supports the singer. I think it was very courageous for someone like Matt Healy, on stage to speak out for LGBT plus human rights. LGBT people can face 20 years in prison plus flogging, whipping, uh, caning. Um, it is a very, very vicious homophobic regime. And some people in Malaysia may criticise him, but I know others who are wholly supportive. All right, we got to go. We just got banned from Kuala Lumpur. I'll see you later. Malaysian authorities cancelled the music festival. The band called off their subsequent performances in Indonesia and in Taiwan, which is largely seen as progressive. People don't really know what's going on in Asia, so probably they assume in Asia every country is like that, but the, the truth is not. Uh, it's important to note that uh, Taiwan is a very LGBT-friendly country and they are welcome to here. Critics suggest the band could have protested by not going, but it's undeniable this kiss on a Malaysian stage has now been elevated to a world one and a conversation started once again. Adele Robinson, Sky News. Mm, interesting. Well, um, he says 
I made a mistake when we were booking shows. I wasn't looking into <coughs> it. I don't see the fucking point. And I have to tell you, I watched this, and I thought, if I were 20, would I appreciate this? Because the crowd loved it. They, every time he said anything, they applauded and roared. And he wandered back and forth on the stage with a bottle of wine that he took swigs from occasionally and said, uh, there was a, wielding a bottle of wine, he addressed the audience directly. Unfortunately, you don't get a set of loads um, of uplifting songs because I'm fucking furious. And that's not fair on you because you're not representative of your government. You are young people, and I'm sure a lot of you are gay and progressive, crowd roared. Uh, the singer added that 1975 considered dropping out of the show because of Malaysia's anti-gay laws. I pulled the show yesterday and we had a conversation. We said, you know what? We can't let kids down because they're not the government. If you want to invite me here to do a show, you can fuck off. It was like, fuck this, fuck that. <laughs> Uh, I'll take your money, you can ban me, but I've done this before and it doesn't feel good. So then the bassist walks out and they really they had a very long caress-filled kiss. Uh, I have to add that Matt Healy is straight though, Matty Healy. Um, so they engaged in a prolonged kiss um, in protest of the legislation. Being LGBTQ in the country is illegal with laws strictly enforced and queer people frequently subject to hate crimes. Uh, so he says, all right, I gotta go. I just got banned from Kuala Lumpur. I'll see you later. Uh, and then they canceled their shows, as you heard in the clip, in Jakarta and also in Taiwan, which, as the um, speaker in the clip said, was kind of blindsided because, you know, it was um, invoking Asian stereotype because Taiwan is very LGBTQ plus friendly. Uh, he has a long time record of advocating for the LGBTQ community. That's one person's interpretation, including Peter Tatchell's, who you saw speaking on the clip. He pulled a similar stunt in Dubai in 2019, kissing a male fan on stage in protest of the UAE's legislative attacks on queer people. Being gay in the UAE can land residents up to 15 years in prison. I don't know what happened to this audience member. After that, he wrote on Twitter, I don't think we'll be allowed back in the UAE because of my behavior, but you know that I love you. I wouldn't have done anything differently given the chance again. So then, uh, the Malaysian government halted the festival. Uh, there will be no compromise against any party that challenges, disparages, and violates Malaysian laws the country's communication minister said. Um, the 1975 has also been banned from performing in Malaysia. Homosexuality is a crime in the Muslim majority Malaysia. Rights groups have warned of growing intolerance against lesbian, gay, and bisexual, and transgender people. Um, the episode ignited an uproar on Malaysian social media, including among some members of the LGBTQ community who accused Mr. Haley of performative activism, said his action was likely to expose the community to more stigma and discrimination, as the speaker on the clip said. Um, so that's that. Well, One more thing. A Malaysian drag queen, Carmen Rose, Rose said Healy's attack on anti-LGBTQ laws was performative and unruly. Speaking to the BBC World Services News Hour, Rose said, it is giving white savior complex, <laughs> and he, Maddie Healy, wasn't doing it for our community. He was doing it for our community. If he was doing it for our community, she added, he would know what consequences we would have to go through. So. Okay, my basic question is, is the band worth listening to to begin with? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pop band. It's British. I can tell you that. Yeah. <clears throat> it was trying, but you know, I'm older. Uh, I don't know if older I Older and wiser? I don't know about wiser. I'm not going there. Mm -hmm. Me either. All right, we need to move on to your clip now because... Let me go to Europe, and this is kind of on the downer side. I have a Swedish... I have a clip of a Swedish film... Uh, called Nelly and Nadine. Nelly and Nadine is the unlikely love story between two women falling in love on Christmas Eve, 1944. 
at the Ravensbrück concentration camp. For many years, their relationship was kept a secret. So let's look at a clip from Nellie and Nadine. Bah, tu sais bien, j'ai essayé plusieurs fois de lire le, le journal de Mamina et mm. j'ai jamais réussi. Oui, je sais. Ça, c'est une partie de sa vie euh, bon, qui est très très sombre et la guerre, euh, le camp. Le... C'est Noël, Ravensbrück 1944. L'angoisse m'étouffait. Je ne pouvais rien avaler. Soudain, une voix appelle dans le brouhaha. Chante-nous donc, Butterfly. Deux bras me serrent. Deux baisers sur ma joue. Ses cheveux noirs, sa peau d'ivoire, ses yeux obliques. Nadine. It never occurred to you that these two ladies might be in love with each other. Et elle a été donc transférée de Ravensbrück. Cette période de Nadine. Le train s'ébranle. La reverrai jamais. Pour moi, c'était. On allait chez ma grand-mère, elle habitait avec euh, quelqu'un d'autre. Je rêve qu'un jour, peut-être, tu viendras frapper à ma porte. Elles ont voulu faire euh, une histoire d'amour entre elles deux, entre les deux. Nadine. Y aura-t-il jamais une vie pour nous That's gonna be intense. You can watch it on Just Watch, Amazon Prime, Voodoo, and Apple TV. And let me just do my headlines. And 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 don't watch it alone. No. But, yeah. And I'm reading a lot of um, uh, material yeah. about the Holocaust in preparation for an interview. Um, let's look at a picture now on more of an upbeat note of thousands marching in Budapest pride despite Hungary's restrictive laws. So there's a picture of some marchers and uh, the chapter and verse of these restrictive laws is that a bookstore has been fined for selling Heartstopper, you know, the popular mm -hmm. um, young adult series and it, there's a graph, there are novelistic accompaniments and the bookstore owner put it in the regular young adult section instead of wrapping it, shrink wrapping it. So that bookstore owner was fined uh, $3,600. A bad story from Italy, courtesy of the Prime Minister Giorgio Maloney, lesbian mothers are being yeah. removed from birth certificates in Italy. Yep, I did hear that. Yeah, you sent me that clip, in fact. Yeah. And then finally, I have a picture before you of Castor Semenya, who won a measured victory in the European Court of Human Rights. Castor Semenya, as we know, is not transgender. She just has all this testosterone. Right. Yeah. And Naturally they've been messing occurring. around. And so the Court of Human Rights said this is discrimination. But um, it's sort of like some of the other um, issues I've been reporting on. I mean, she's South African. They praised the ruling. Her legal team praised the ruling. Um, but she has to go through mo appeals uh, before a Swedish court that has turned her down in the past. So she's gotten this modest, this gesture from the European Court of Human Rights. Okay, we gotta go. <laughs> she's done. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Attorney General Bonta, Bonta is uh, committed to protecting the rights of all people, recognizing that discrimination has no place in our society. Attorney General Bonta is fighting to protect transgender students and adults across the nation and strictly enforcing California's law that prohibits state-funded travel to states that discriminate against LGBTQ communities. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And the American Civil Liberties Union uh, the ACLU of Texas and Lambda Liga have filed lawsuits um, seeking to block statewide directive that transgender rights advocates describe as an attempt to persecute trans children and their families. The lawsuit was filed Tuesday and aimed to stopping the Texas Department of Family 
uh, and Protective Services from enacting Governor Greg Abbott's orders to investigate parents and doctors who provide trans children with gender-affirming care. Did anybody see what he did today? Um, on the buoys? Yeah, on the buoys. That's a, what a, what a, lovely, what a lovely person. And in a, in a sad story, it's Greg Burdenbach was walking home in Coconut Grove in Miami on the evening of July 8th when he was attacked. The popular fight attendant for American Airlines remembers being plummeted to the ground by two men yelling slurs before blacking out. I knew I was being punched, kept getting punched in the face, kicked in the back, and they kept calling me a faggot, he said on local TV. So it's happening everywhere. The Montana State Library Commission opted to withdraw from the American Library Association on Tuesday, citing the disapproval of the ALA's new president, who previously described herself as a Marxist lesbian. <laughs> I'm with her. <laughs> Upon her election in April 2022, ALA President Emily Drabinsky wrote in a tweet, I just cannot believe that a Marxist lesbian who believes that collective power is possible to build and can be wielded for a better world is the president-elect of the ALA library. The post has since been deleted. So. I saw her on TV. She's really kind of a powerhouse. I was going to say, I thought being a Marxist lesbian was a requirement for being a librarian. <laughs> I, what the heck? I mean, that was my, I, that was what I always thought. That and a double masters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I'm going to skip more of the Ted Cruz, but, but that picture of him is really funny. We'll look forward to seeing it. waiting for it. As the Barbie. <clears throat> and an arrest has been made in the stabbing murder of an Oregon man who was killed when he defended mm. a co worker from homo homophobic mm. abuse. U.S. Marshals arrested Jackson, 24, and charged him with the murder of Colin Michael Smith, 32, that took place in Buck, the neighborhood of Portland, just before 2 a.m. Smith was enjoying drinks at the High Dive Bar after work with friends when Jackson allegedly began hurling anti-LGBTQ slurs at a non-binary friend who was also a co-worker. When Jackson reportedly touched two members of the group inappropriately, Smith stepped to the de-escalation to de-escalate the situation. In response, Jackson reported stabbing Smith before fleeing the scene, so. Mm. Oh, and this is like, never mind. <laughs> Dr. Sherry A. Pies, who blazed the trail for lesbian mothers and became a national leader in women's health, died of cancer in Berkeley, California. She was 73. Mm. In, decade, in decades before same-sex marriage was legal, Pye's 1985 book, Considering Parenthood, a workbook for lesbians with a lifeline to countless lesbians who were eager to become mothers but needed the help to nav navigate the legal and practical issues around adoption, the use of sperm donors, HIV, and other concerns. She was a pioneer, and those of us who came later built on her work, a psychologist and co-worker of the Lesbian Parenting book published in 2003. I would recommend her book to clients. That was when lesbian couples were just starting to think about having children. Sherry stated that Conversation Pies went on to spend many years as a clinical professor at the UC Berkeley School of Public Health. So. You have a picture? No. Well, we I can find know. one. I don't know. So I think um, we'll find one. We'll find one, yeah. Okay, I think we need to move on to trivia now, don't you? So I can answer all of your questions from when <laughs> we started. So 
it wasn't identified as transgender. It was identified as gender identity disorder. Mm. And in 2013, when they were compiling and ready to print the new DSM-5, that's when it became gender dysphoria. And the reason for the change is they wanted to take out the identifier disorder because that truly made it seem as though this is a mental illness. This is something that's aberrant. This is something we must change. However, they used the term gender dysphoria because there had to be something that established a set of symptoms that would then qualify the individual to go forward for gender affirmation treatment. So is this listed in medical or in psycho? Is the, there is the ICD-10 and the DSM-5. Okay. The DSM-5 is specifically for psychiatric, emotional, et cetera, disorders, but all of those diagnoses are included in the ICD-10, which is the medical diagnostic manual. The DSM-5 is about this thick. IDC-10 <laughs> is this thick because I used to have both over my shoulder in my office. <laughs> so. Well, I have a humble opinion. I think dysphoria is also objectionable because it's a medic, it's pathologizing. Right. You know, I'm uncomfortable with the expression dysphoria because it, it's a patholo it's a medical problem, you know? That's my two cents. But, you know, like the way the laws are, you kind of have to have a, reason a way to... because otherwise they won't give you the surgery you need unless you go to a psychiatrist and a doctor and, you know. Getting the like insurance that. to cover yeah. your expenses, they need something to... Something to hang it on. Yeah. What a system. I know. We're going to have lively conversation over dinner. What a country. <laughs> All right. On that note, oh, definitely. remember to resist. resist.